Hello, and welcome to a new episode of 7 Fact. If you love geography and history, subscribe right now. I promise it'll be worth it. Lucerne is a canton, that is, a federal state of Switzerland located right in the center of the country. Primarily a German canton, Lucerne is home to a little over 400,000 people, 15% of which are actually foreign nationals. This is one of Switzerland's most visited regions, and yet it's not a well-known place, is it? So let us rectify that and explore Lucerne in the next few minutes. Humans discovered Lucerne a long time ago, and I really do mean a long time. The oldest traces of humans in the Lucerne area are stone artifacts and cave bear bones, found in caves on Mount Rigi, dating from the Middle Paleolithic. For reference, that was about 32,000 years ago. A lot of time had passed since then, of course, and the history of modern-day Lucerne started around the time the Roman Empire collapsed. Once they were gone, Alemanni German tribes started to move in and gradually change the culture of the place. Around the year 750 AD, the village of Lucerne was founded as a monastery. The myth around the creation and naming of Lucerne says that an angel holding a lantern in the sky guided the people to this place, who then founded the monastery and gave it its name from the Latin Lucerna, meaning lantern. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored and none of them are so far, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. Right, with that said, let's go to fact number 3. Lucerne was arguably the city that initiated the creation of the Swiss Confederation. For quite some time since 1290, when the population had risen to about 3,000 inhabitants and the city itself had become powerful and self-sufficient, Lucerne had been under the rule of King Rudolf I of the Habsburgs. But the rising discontent with the Austrian influence pushed Lucerne to ally with neighboring towns to seek independence from the Habsburg rule. Thus, on the 7th of November 1332, Lucerne and three other forest cantons of Uri, Schwitz and Unterwalden made an alliance, the Eidgenossenschaft, thus forming the Eternal Swiss Confederacy, with Zurich, Zug and Bern joining shortly afterwards. The capital of Lucerne is the city bearing the same name. Nestled at the foot of the majestic Swiss Alps and on the shores of Lake Lucerne, this beautifully idyllic place full of intricately decorated houses with centuries-old ornaments, towers and spires next to the neighboring mounts Pilatus and Rigi without a doubt justifies the claim of being the most beautiful city in Switzerland. Each year millions of tourists flock to Lucerne, lured by its beauty and irresistible charm. The city also hosts several festivals like the Winter Carnival, classical music concerts, rock, jazz, blues and so on. So its designation as the cultural center of the canton is by no means an exaggeration. Some of the most charming features of the city of Lucerne are its bridges. The Chapel Bridge or Kappelbrücke is a 200 meter long covered wooden bridge in the city center with 111 paintings on the inside. Attached is the water tower, which dates back to about the year 1300, while the bridge itself was originally built in 1365, making it the oldest wooden covered bridge in Europe. The Sproja Bridge was constructed in 1408 and features a series of medieval-style 17th century plague paintings by Kaspar Meglinger, titled Dance of Death or Totentanz. The images and text of the Lucerne Dance Macabre are intended to highlight that there's no place in the city, in the country or at sea where death isn't present. The Swiss Museum of Transport is one of the most interesting in the world and the largest museum in Europe exhibiting all forms of transport, including locomotives, automobiles, motorcycles, ships, aircrafts, helicopters and spacecrafts. This is of course Switzerland's most popular museum, and boy is it a fun place to explore. There is no way you won't find this place interesting, but just in case you had enough of vehicles, there's also a planetarium and a cinema. Once you're done exploring the history of transportation, perhaps you'd like to delight yourself with some art. 
The first place you should visit is the Bourbaki Panorama. The emotional outpourings of Eduard Kast from 1881 are most vividly captured in a 112 meters by 10 meters giant circular panoramic painting. The soldiers caught in the German-French War of 1870-1871 under the French general Bourbaki and the heart-rendering miseries endured by civilians is so vividly brought to life by the painter that one can almost feel the anguish simply by viewing it. In front of the painting is a sculptural area which brings out the whole scene in a three-dimensional effect. Edouard Kast, who participated in the war as a Red Cross volunteer, has made the canvas come alive with probably the most realistic portrayal of this war. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time, bye.